Them fucked up, fucked up. I like that damn beginning of that song. If y'all watch this damn uh web series, you go hear it in the beginning. Charlie, I like this shit. Okay, we talking about Tangled and Twisted, the web series, child. Yes, God, honey, the web series. This is season one, episode two. Shit done hit the fan, okay? Okay. Now, we're going to start this episode back off with Mook and Miss May in that car. Remember, I told you they were riding through the neighborhood, minding their own business. She talking about getting her lawn like her neighbor's lawns because she want her shit to be beautiful as a uh, old scrappy say off of love and hip hop. He, she, he, she, she just wanted to be beautiful. Well, he's saying, Auntie, I got you. Remember the thug niggas pulled up screaming at Auntie May and, and pointing guns in her face. The Danny gave the woman a heart attack, stroke, and a seizure all at the same damn time. And um, they finally pull on off. Now, Auntie scared out her damn mind. She asked him, Mook, you know who that is? He's saying, uh, they just some thug niggas, my, uh, Auntie. Don't worry about it. She, she, you know, she's like, oh, these disrespect. Baby, she was clutching uh, imaginary pearls the whole motherfucking time doing this scene. Oh, they just so disrespectful. He pointed that gun in my face, threatened to shoot me, called me out my name. These kids just disrespect. Respectful nowadays. Meanwhile, Mook sitting up there, he trying to keep get her to calm down, and he trying to maintain his calm because street game dictates that he must do something about this. Okay, you just can't be coming up on people, especially when they with their folks and pulling no guns and making no threats. You either gonna be about that life or you gonna be dead playing around like you about that life. And that's what he in the mind. And Auntie done been around his ass long enough. She know what he's thinking about. That's why she telling him to calm the hell down, slow the hell down, and just let that shit be what it's gonna motherfucking be. Don't be, don't, just let it go, Mook, let it go. He telling her, all right, but he driving faster than a motherfucker, which is an indication that he is indeed upset about what happened. And, uh... Did you see that boy turn that damn light off? But anyhow, uh, he tell, she telling him to calm down. He's saying he, he calm. We see him get back to the house. He don't say nothing to nobody. I guess the uh, mo uh, scoop in the crew knew what the deal was. I don't know how they knew. But this dude get out the car. Auntie still uh, walking up on her porch saying, please just let it go. He's speaking to the people, but he going in that house. It's like he about to get him some shit because he about to go avenge this situation. See, Auntie didn't understand that when you in the street game, like I said, you either about that life or you talking about that life. And this shit right here, when you could disrespect a motherfucker with their relative, this is the quickest way for you to end up uh, casket shawl. He said they done came and messed with him, had his auntie all upset. He straight on auto until... It, a straight auto to the casket. Now, if you ain't from the hood, you ain't gonna understand that. So, click the link below and go down there and look at the boy damn video and you'll kind of get what we're saying right here. <laughs> it's time to put up a shut up, okay? That's basically what it is. Now, let's go down to the east side. And the thug niggas from earlier standing around, one of them trying to talk to this chick look like T-Boss, okay? They trying to holler at her. Meanwhile, two cars done eased up in the neighborhood. They park opposite sides of each other. These cats get out. They ain't really hiding their face or nothing like that. They just being them. And, baby, they roll up on them ninjas. And when I tell you, they lit them up. Let the bodies hit the flow, bitch. Okay, that's what they did. Hurry up and get out of here. I'm trying to do my review. Uh, so after they done killed these boys, okay, and took off, we switch up to two hours later. Now after they done did that, they you got Mook and 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 uh, I forgot old boy name. He in the car together, and then you got uh. June, Mook and June Bug in a car together, and then two other niggas in a car together. All a part of the crew, okay? Um, they saying they got to get rid of the cars, the clothes, and ammo, and despite how hard they, they are, you can tell that these boys is traumatized by this. See, I'm going to tell you something, and I've seen this firsthand. No matter how hard a dude has be, 
I've never met the ones that indeed is so long that they become desensitized to it. These dudes is tripping out. They so shook by what they just did. They sitting here trying to convince themselves that it was all right what they did. Tell my well, he he scared my auntie. You know, you just don't do that. I understand what you're saying, partner, but at the end of the day, you trying to justify what you just did and it was wrong. But being that that is how, that street code, when you violate me. I'm going to violate you. And my violation might be a little bit more deep than yours, okay? That's all it is. That's all it is, okay? You got Mook and Junebug, they in another car, and they talking about how, how they, you know, how uh, they, uh, how he just did this. We find out, remember the girl I told y'all named T-Ball, that I mean, they looked like T-Ball that was keeping them boys occupied, kind of distracting them from paying attention to Mook and the crew rolling up in the hood on them? Well, come to find out that that is Mook next door neighbor. He had her go do that for him. And he killed, you know, he, he too, just like the other guys, are sitting in his car trying to convince themselves that what you just did was right, okay? He's saying that he going to have to get this, he going to have to go on and shake the spot a minute. He said the block is hot, child. They going to the Carolina, South Carolina to be exact in a minute. June Bull say, well, I'm going to have to buy out of that, bro. I, I'm making too much money down here in the A, so I'm not going to roll with you, okay? Now, let's go back to the car with the other two members of uh, Moose Crew and, uh, uh, well, them other two dudes, child. And it's Mook and, uh, I can't forget, I can't remember what that dude's name is. But anyway, I got to get these names together. They talking about they got to stop and get this package and then they heading out to South Carolina too. Everybody done killed these boys, now they want to go to South Carolina and hide. Now let's go to Stone Mountain, Georgia, okay? We get this house on the block with this, t and on the side of it, we meet Clue, Monica, and Jazz. They sitting on the side of the house getting blazed and towed up. He's saying he still got some more coke in the house, but I guess they smoking some weed or whatever the hell it is that they doing, but they back there doing it. Now, we learn. Jazz is new to this shit. She ain't true to it yet. She's saying she feeling funny. He's, uh, Monica's saying, you got to be careful. You're you going to be all right. You a newbie to this thing, girl. Just keep fucking with us. We're going to get you together. You know, it's going to be all right. While they having this little conversation going on, the camera switches to a scene where there's this apparently undercover cop that has been set to go stake out this house. And he's somewhat agitated about it because as of yet, he ain't seen no activity. And he's telling his wife that because she done called on the phone. And he's saying, you know, they got me on another bullshit stake out, but ain't, it, it don't look like nothing going on. When he said that, we see two crackheads going up to Clue's house. And the man crackhead ain't got no damn shoes on it. So he realized what he looking at. So he tell her, let me call you back and get that damn good ass camera. They can pan in real good, zoom in and see everything you doing. He's sitting there. He's watching this. He watching the interaction. He's taking pictures. Cluden came to the door. They want to get some, uh, they want to get some work. He sells them the work. Even Clue looked down and say, where your shoes at? Oh boy, said he don't need no fucking shoes. A.K.A. he sold them goddamn shoes. So he he serves them and they leave, okay? Cop done caught the people, the two fiends as they turn it around. He done got to capture their face. He done captured this interaction that just happened at this dope, okay? Now, you got Clue going back up in there with the two girls. Well, with the one girl, Jazz, is sitting in there. And she's saying that, you know, she come from a Jehovah Witness family. She never got to celebrate any holidays. She never got to kick it with friends. She just fed up with her parents. And he basically is the bad boy that she been looking for. He started feeding her shit. He, she told him, well, he told her that, you know, he'll always help her get her nose dirty. She just got to relax and live like some. He, she over there telling us that she done been popping mollies and now she getting, she powdering her damn nose, okay? Child. Monica come through there and tell him, you might want to slow down with her with that there because we hate for her ass to be the old D, you know what I'm saying? She new to this, but old girl saying she can handle it, and Clue is saying that she can, he can handle it too. Child, this ain't nothing. It's always the powder heads or the crack heads trying to sell the powder and the crack. It, that's something. That's, that's something else, honey. But this, this thug life, follow me. I'm going to bless you.
Now, the other car, that car I told you about that, uh, uh, they, that the old boys was trying to convince each other that they was right in, in committing this murder. They saying that they got to, you know, they need to get the hell out of town ASAP and on to South Carolina as soon as possible. But we learned from this scene that they are actually on their way over to Clue House. So Clue is the one they need to go get the package from before they can roll the fuck on out. Now, let's go back to Clue's house because a lot of shit going to happen at Clue's house. You got this white woman. Remember that I told you two fiends came to the door previously in Boston Crack. One of which was with Mel. He didn't have no shoes on. He had a woman with him. This woman returns to this house. She come back. She like, look, that's a stingy motherfucker. I had to suck some dick to be able to get this here and I need a dude. He said, okay. But she has to use the bathroom. He allows her to go in there and use the bathroom. He, instead of him letting her use the bathroom, getting her up out the house, or better yet, telling her no at all. Which, y'all know, that's how they really would have went in written. Okay. She wouldn't have used no bathroom. Um, instead of him, uh, you know, waiting on her to leave the room, you know, leave the house, if he gonna, whatever he going to do with her. He sit back down and start beaming back up with uh, Jazz and Monica. Monica say, is that crackhead still in that bathroom? He said, yeah. She said, you might want to go check on that bitch. Ain't no telling why she ain't coming out that bathroom yet. He said, she'll be all right. He ain't gonna go check on her right now. Here, besides, he got her dude. Hmm. Now, we see the crew. Don't know their names yet. Not all of them, but as I do this review, I'm going to start giving y'all names because I did learn as I was going on. I just didn't write it back. You know, I keep it real, bitch. I keep it real over here. I want you to feel where I'm coming from. Now, that crew, them two dudes I told you that was arguing with each other, okay? They arrive at Clue's house. They come through that side where they was, where Monica and them was out there smoking their shit in. And it's like the, I don't know, they got crackhead at security? Child, because you got this one thing named Kool-Aid standing up there, and he playing around, talking about, he, you know, what y'all done did. I can see it in your face. Hell, I've I, I been out here so long. Hell, I remember when you boys was in Pampers and all that other shit, and I think he was trying to get some dope from um, Mook, because that's who I found out that it was. It was Mook he was fucking with. He trying to get some dope. Mook ain't trying to hear that shit. Nigga, move. I need to get in the house. I ain't got time to play with you today. He that crackhead that be in the neighborhood that always joking with people, and sometimes you got a minute to give him a nice kiki, and sometimes you got to say fuck his ass and don't pay him no mind and go on about your business. Well, he tell him, you know, he keep playing with him. We we'll get to the point where he about to get ready to punch this motherfucker in his shit or shoot him. Old boy said, my bad. You know, it ain't that bad. He uh told him, you know, he moved out the way and let that motherfucker get in that house. Okay, that's what he did. He said he, heard, he trying to hurry him get that work. He ain't got time to be playing with that motherfucker, okay? Okay, he lets him in the house. Okay. Then, after he get in the house, here come Dreadhead. Dreadhead is a part of Moose Posse, too. And he's trying to get in the house. Kool-Aid playing again with this man, and he's telling him to stop. He keeps being playful. Old oh boy, knock his ass to the ground and going up in the house. <laughs> Kool-Aid did what they always do, just like EZL off of Friday. He going to talk about it. That's all right. When you leave here and get up the road, they gonna have your spread eagle. Nigga, your colon gonna be showing. I'm Kool-Aid. I feel like, baby, that was a cute little scene. That was so funny. When Dreadhead comes in and he say he need that money, they got to move fast. And Clue giving excuses, talking about the money with somebody named Nick or something like that. But he like, man, what kind of shit going on around here? You got the crackheads at the door. And then as he's saying that shit, here comes the white girl. Remember the crack fiend? She just not coming out the bathroom. This bitch ain't got no clothes on. And look like Clue was in there with her, too. Was he servicing? Was she being serviced by, uh, was he ser Was she servicing Clue for some more dope? Because if she come out of there with the old floppy ass titties, I was like, girl, if you don't put a bra on them motherfuckers, you better. Child. 
she come out of there and he noticing how fucked up shit being ran around him and he really ain't got time to be focusing on that because they need to get this money get this whatever they need to get and they need to get out of town because they didn't just did a, a, a walk up and kill a bitch okay a walk up on the bitch not a drive by a walk up because that's what they did they walked up on the motherfuckers and killed them well he telling uh clue come on let's go over here and holler at this dude nick because i gotta get this tonight he told swoopy on the phone to call each and let each know that we probably gonna make it there by tomorrow okay well swoop called each and they they come you know He's saying that they're going to come through and holler at him in about two hours. I didn't get that because it's, I thought he said that he was going to be there by the next day because they got these delays. But he's saying uh, two hours. The girl asking about Mook and Spook say that Mook when I, uh, uh, she asking about Mook. She, he say Mook went out, uh, but he coming back, and she say yeah, cause all the not all the dots done been connected. I don't know what the fuck that mean, but we gonna know, child, cause part three is coming up soon. Okay. Next, we see the police going around the neighborhood of where these young men were killed, trying to get answers. They knock at this one chick door. She comes to the door. She pissed off, cause. His knocking then woke up the baby. Now, I think that's the same girl that's in this car, because I'm going to talk about some in a minute. But she she pissed off. She's saying she ain't seen nothing. She don't know nothing. She slammed the door. The cops go to talk to other folks to see if what they may know. Now, you got the female cop saying it's a no-snitch policy over here, and, and that's clear. Because we done talked to five different people who others have said was possible eyewitnesses and don't nobody know nothing. The white cop is saying that's dumb because when don't they realize someone been murdered, baby? Go back to the suburbs. I see where you're coming with this. You, you they don't. They don't give a child. Okay. Then we get this scene. Like I said, these two chicks, they sitting in a car, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. And um, she said she went into the yard of one of the guys that was killed. And I guess his people got pissed off and started telling her to get off the land. I guess they was upset. You know how it is when, when somebody get killed or something. Especially if it's a bad situation in the hood, you sort of get your ass cussed out. And they don't mean no harm. They just hurt. But anyway, the driver's side, uh, the girl sitting on the driver's side said, see, that's why I don't fuck with these east side hoes over here. She tell the passenger chick, you the only bitch from over here on the east side that I buy with. Passenger chick get out and go to her apartment. Now, I'm thinking that's that same girl that went off because sound like the same girl. Y'all get me together down in them comments. You know, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Shit, I only seen this shit twice. I have to watch this a couple of two, three times. And then I have to jump back into hood mode because y'all know I'm from the hood. I know about this shit. <coughs> but anyway, she gets out and she goes into the apartment. Here comes this, what we assume is a fiend, knocking at this driver's side door. Oh, girl, let the window down. Like, what, what you want? First, she asked her, "Did has she seen somebody? Oh, girl, like, hell no. Then she asked the girl, do you, you got some work on you? Um, let me hold $2. Oh, girl, I told him, you don't get your motherfucking ass away from my damn car, bitch, you better. Go on about your business, fiend. Go on about your business. Okay? Oh, then we see the two cops again. The white cop saying he tired of this kind of shit all the time. And, that, and the black cop is saying that these folks, this is just how they are. These kids, they listen to this rap music, getting, you know, it in their head that they can live these certain kind of lives, yada, yada, yada. You know, the same bullshit they say about kids all the time anyway. And so anyway, we see that the girl... They they saw that girl leave. Okay, that was that girl that left out that car. This, my notes just see see. Don't trip. I'm bad. That girl that was in that car talking about she had got cussed out. Went in that apartment. That's who they wind up talking to. They went to this apartment again to try to talk to this girl because she's supposed to be an eyewitness. Oh, girl answered the door and she basically saying she ain't seen nothing. She don't know nothing. Leave her the fuck alone. Okay. She she really ain't trying to hit that shit. She go back to the car with old girl, okay? Now, this is where the shit really turns it. Now, you got this chick saying, I ain't no snitch bitch, okay? I'm not finna tell her nothing. They telling her that it's her civic duty, in a sense, and that there could possibly, you know, be a reward or whatnot. Before they even mentioned the reward, she had begun to show signs of being a snitch bitch because she says, I'm only going to tell you what I seen because. 
Now, they ain't mention no money to this bitch yet. They just asking her to tell it. And because she used to fuck with one of the dudes, a dude by the name of Owen, and she just can't believe his fine ass did, she going to tell them what she seen. She tells the police that she was sitting on her porch, her and her relatives and some children. And the guys was out there talking. Okay? She see two cars pull up. And in broad daylight, these niggas just spray everybody. She say she grabbed the kids and go in the house. She don't know what's going on. And she can't really understand what's happening outside because of all the gunshots, the running, and the screaming. She is under the... Uh, under her kitchen table when she and she hear two cars drive off she don't know what model or make these cars are but she know that they were in fact you know two vehicles that sped off she said the only reason why she's saying like i said anything is because of that she don't know what the cars was she didn't even get to see their faces in all of the chaos and commotion that was going on <laughs> this is where her memory is going to get good i'm pretty sure it ends with the police saying to her that they thank her for what she know. Please contact them if they if she happened to find out any additional information. And if she does, there could possibly be a reward. Bling 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 bling. Bitch, don't nobody in the hood. I'm gonna tell you money, baby. Most of it's a lot of motherfuckers running around here claiming like they, they, you know, they, they follow the rules of the hood all day but the minute you show them a dollar, them bitches gonna do whatever they gotta do to fuck up over you. And that's what she's gonna do. She gonna say, hmm, a reward? She said, he said, yeah. She said, well, if I think of anything, I will give you guys a call. She's gonna call. Meanwhile, they look over there at her friend. Her friend said, don't even think about it. I ain't seen nothing. I don't know nothing. I ain't nothing. And I don't care about no reward. I ain't no snitch, bitch. That would have been me. I don't snitch. But anyway, that's where it ended off. Now, like I said, this is a web series. It, he t actually told me that this, um, he told me that he's going to actually upload part three within the next two to three weeks. So, we going to wait till then. I'm going to link this edition with well, this episode in my uh, description box y'all go over there and watch this those of you who have had you know tragedies in your life you know due to gun violence in the hood I don't I if you strong enough to take what you seen then I implore you to go over there and watch it as well but if you can't I totally understand it you gonna have to like I said if you enjoy boys in the hood and shit like that minister society as I did you gonna fit right on into this shit cuz I ain't think I was gonna be able to do it but then I had to go back and look and I said oh girl I was liking what I was seeing I said and he's an independent filmmaker, this Shaheem Salid or whatever his name is. Baby, you're doing good things. I'm going to continue to try to support you. Um, I'll be looking forward for the next review. You know, I'll be looking forward for the next uh, series to drop so that I'll be right back down here talking about this with y'all. I got another web series that somebody in my comments put me on to it. I'm going to talk about that until Mr. Shaheen, uh, Shaheen get his get part three up here so I can talk about this right here. Y'all wouldn't believe I don't know this young man. I just believe in his work. I believe in his work. I believe that he could actually go places and when he do he best to remember to cast me in some i don't give a damn what it is i be i be the dope dealer i be the dope dealer girlfriend but i won't be the crackhead in the meantime in between time please like comment subscribe i'll see you guys back down here for uh q a the real world now q a with lady nika tomorrow peace